Charisma Quotient. I'm your host, Kim Seltzer, a dating and makeover expert, where I will help you build confidence, make connections, and find love from the outside in. Are you in a total trance? And what I mean by that, are you walking around through life, but it's almost as if you are a zombie and you're not seeing the people around you, or you might be numbing out, swiping on profiles, and you're going through the motions of dating, but you're really not connected to it or the people that you are even meeting or seeing. Um, I just kind of wanted to throw out this whole theme about being more mindful when dating because I just got back from New York and I was with a VIP client and it was astounding. In fact, I have a clip. Um, if any of you follow me on social media, hop onto my Instagram um, or TikTok. And I even had my client talk about the experience because it was profound. Um, this is a woman who... She was in a very toxic marriage and she had been divorced and eight years had gone by, eight years. And she just hadn't dated. She hadn't really kind of done anything. But not only that, what she realized after working together was that she was in a trance (laughs) and it wasn't until I saw her with her body language, not being aware, um, not even listening to what was going on around her, being just there, but not really connected. And whether we were talking to people in a restaurant or talking to people and you know, while we were shopping, everything was just kind of in this almost robotic kind of way. And what was funny is that over the course of the first day, She was like, Kimmy, I'm just feeling almost worse and I'm not sure what's happening to me. And what was happening to her is that she was actually feeling for the first time. She didn't realize how disconnected she was with her body, with her feelings until we started working on this stuff in real life. And I was her mirror. And I said to her, it's like, you're not even here. And she's like, oh my gosh, I had no idea this was happening. And what really kind of hit the nail on the head was we were walking on a street and this woman said, watch out, there's dog crap right here. Oh my God, I almost stepped in it. And she didn't even hear it. She didn't even see it. She didn't smell it. And I literally had to like push her out of the way until and and that's when she's like she woke up and she said, "Oh my gosh, Kimmy, I really, I really am not aware of anything." And she had this huge breakdown and breakthrough, and she started crying. And it was beautiful though because for the first time after eight years, she was feeling. She just started like realizing that she'd been gone, like in her head all the time, not really, you know, realizing what was happening to her. And after that breakthrough, the next morning when I saw her, it was like, she was a different person. She's like, Kimmy, I feel how I did before my marriage. And I said, welcome home. It was really beautiful. And like I said, you can check it out on social media, but this was um, not just her, but a common theme that has been happening to a lot of people that I have been talking to. Another woman that I started working with, she was very successful, high achiever, you know, kind of the typical CEO. She started off our first conversation with, I hate dating. Online dating is atrocious. I've been on every site. They all suck. And you should see some of these guys. I go on their dates and there just isn't any chemistry. The conversations are so boring. It's just like an interview. And I agreed with her that it can feel like work, especially when you have had one bad date after another. But then I told her something that really surprised her. I I asked her, if she was really present with her dates or was she just numbing out 
swiping on the apps and basically swiping on these men in real life and not really being mindful or emotionally connected to the dates. And what we discovered together after doing a lot of detective work by looking at her profile and how she was interacting with people was that she really was just going through the motions And she would just say, well, yeah, I'm dating, but nothing's really happening. But really, she wasn't giving any of these guys any chances because she was the common denominator for why these dates were boring and disconnected and not progressing. She was extremely picky with each guy she swiped on, and she didn't even read the profile. Like it wasn't until I hopped into Bumble with her and I was saying, okay, like just pretend I'm not here. Like who would you click on? Who would you not? And she was just making these quick decisions and judgments based on their picture. Her conversations were serious. They were interrogative, like she was a detective and she didn't share anything about herself. And when I saw her in person, she wore very conservative business-like attire and very dull earth tone colors and her body language was stiff and standoffish. And it was almost as if she was in an interview mode and was leading with her CEO work energy. And there was absolutely zero flirtation or playfulness, let alone presence and connection. So I put her on a dating regimen that was more mindful, intentional, and open where she worked on being playful, connecting with everyone she met, and not being attached to the outcome, which was huge for her because every time she would meet someone, she was thinking in her head, well, could this be my boyfriend? Is this my soulmate? And we really worked on incorporating more color, of course, and dresses in her wardrobe. And I had her practicing just smiling and laughing while she told stories and shared personal journeys on her dates. And over time, she was able to focus and really have fun dating. And after a while, she finally found men she liked and actually had chemistry with. She made it all happen because she was what she was trying to attract. So again, this is a common scenario I hear a lot of you are talking about. And it's, you know, so much so where you end up feeling this dating burnout. But if this is you, you need to ask yourself, are you aware and being mindful when dating? Are you too just numbing out and oozing negativity? Mindful dating is a great way to approach the dating scene. If you've been on many dates over the years and noticed that things aren't working out, this dating approach can help you become more aware of how you approach the dating process to gain a better grasp of your emotions and behaviors. And mindful dating is the process of being aware on dates. It's literally like what I was saying. It's waking up. It's about recognizing your emotions, your values, your behaviors, and that will help you select a partner who is truly the right fit for you. It's also about handling rejection neutrally. And it's about being more present when you're trying to find love with the right person. And when you practice this mindful dating, you're going to increase your self-awareness, be more present, and create emotional connections with everyone you meet, not just your quote-unquote dates. And this is so important because when you set clear intentions and foster genuine connections. It will open up your mind to more possibilities, opportunities, and ultimately result in finding a healthy relationship. Now, I know what you're thinking. Kim, I am so burnt out with all my efforts, and I tried every app, and I've been on so many dates. I just don't have the energy to go out with people I'm not interested in, and I don't want to waste my time. And listen, I get it. It's hard to motivate when you are in a state of burnout and negativity. But here's the truth, is that in your efforts of not wanting to waste more time, you are actually wasting time by just going through the motions without recognizing your emotions, your values, and your behaviors to select a partner who is truly the right fit for you. And I challenge you to ask yourself, How much of you numbing out is also a way of trying to protect yourself from getting hurt in another bad relationship or even being rejected? 
So in essence, no one will be good enough because then you don't have to expose yourself to a potentially damaging situation or relationship. It is keeping you safe. But when you practice the mindful dating, I promise you are going to increase your self-awareness. You're going to be more present and you're going to create emotional connections with everyone you meet, both online and offline. So I want to give you some tips some top tips. I mean, there's a lot more than this, but I would say these are the top five for dating mindfully. Because in theory, this sounds like it would be an easy task. But as I go through these tips, I want you to think about, well, what have you been doing when you're going on dates? Have you been doing any of these things? And if not, at least try one of these things. All right. Number one, don't give in to emotions when you feel lonely you often feel higher levels of emotion. I mean, that's normal. Maybe there's a hint of desperation, a craving almost to be loved. However, mindful dating, it's all about recognizing when your emotions are growing stronger. So you kind of lean into it. And sometimes your emotions make you crave relationships with people who aren't the best fit for you because you're just feeling the intensity You crave intimacy and companionship and love, so you cling on to the person who might, let's say, give you attention or that chemically charged interaction you might glob onto. However, the most successful relationships often don't start with passion. The best relationships actually start kind of neutrally, to be honest. When you look at a person objectively, rather than he or she is the one kind of mindset, you push yourself to actually get to know the person rather than relying on that chemically induced sexual attraction that actually can distract you and who this person really is and if they are the right person for you. So you might be surprised in a couple of months when you realize that the love of your life was someone you weren't sure about in the beginning, or maybe you didn't feel anything, or maybe that person was even friend zoned, to be honest. But if there's enough there, I invite you to just be mindful and give that person a couple tries, especially if they kind of check off the important boxes. Mindful dating isn't about being passionate about someone. It's about truly getting to know the other person really well. So If you feel neutral about a person you're on a date with, it's actually a healthy sign that you're dating mindfully. Now, I'm not saying, well, you know, if there's somebody that you're going on a date with, you feel nothing, absolutely nothing to force yourself. You know, what I'm saying, and clients who work with me know this, I do something called a chemistry analysis, and there's four domains in this chemistry analysis. And as you rate and review each of these domains, you kind of see the most important parts of what a person is all about. It's not just the physical. There's emotional, there's intellectual, there's a lot more to it. So give it a chance. That is being more intentional. All right. So number two, date many people. You know, this is my philosophy. And while you do want to give careful attention to each person you date, dating multiple people actually can help you understand what you need in a partner. It's like dating yourself. And when you expose yourself to different personality traits, quirks, habits, all these different things, you begin to see patterns in what you need out of a person and what you can live with. A lot of people and you might be one of them, get caught up into the vortex of a relationship. Like you meet someone and then all of a sudden, three months later, four months later, you find yourself in a relationship and you might be just getting sucked into the vacuum of a relationship, but then you lose yourself with that. You want to get to know as many people as you can so that you can better understand yourself and others and keep your eye on the ball. You are really, like I said, dating yourself. You'll start to see traits you value just kind of emerge, and you may discover even pet peeves that you didn't notice before. But the pet peeves is like this a negotiable or non-negotiable? Is this something you can live with? I mean, everyone has quirks. But when you start seeing like the pink flags turning into the red flags, that's something you pay attention to. And when you're doing 
this kind of dating, you get to see that because you're really like collecting the data. Meeting a lot of people can help you get a crash course on a wide range of personality types to help you find your most compatible mate. And if you're struggling to find many people to meet, just look through your friends and your mutual friends to help you find new meaningful connections. Because most likely your friends will have friends that are more like-minded and even you know, they might be people you think that are not a good fit for you, but in the end, they might really be. So just give people an opportunity. All right. Number three is use dating apps mindfully. So here's the thing. I mean, technology has both made dating easier and more complicated, as we all know. And while the ability to find and reach people through the dating sites and dating apps have been good, It does introduce a new element around dating, and it can introduce a lot of self-pity, self-esteem issues, um, you know, rejection, you know, mindless usage, right? That's where the numbing out comes in. But using a dating app mindfully is not using it compulsively. You know, just you have to set boundaries with the dating apps of your choice, much like you would say with social media. I don't know if any of you have taken a social media detox. I do this with clients a lot of times. Because again, it's like the jackpot, like you're just like putting coins in this machine and you're scrolling through things, but you're not really being mindful and paying attention to each profile. And you, as you know, I mean, online dating isn't the only or even best way to meet people. Um, So you then it's easy to just kind of fall into this mindless swipe culture, carve out time, structure it, you know, so maybe during the week you check the dating sites four times a week for 30 minutes each. Do a routine around it, set boundaries around it so it's not the end-all be-all. That's where burnout happens a lot too. So it's kind of like, well, you wouldn't sit around a bar 24-7. You know, you you also shouldn't use the app in this way. So everything is about balance. That's why I always say my motto is your dating portfolio should be like your financial portfolio. You need to diversify as much as possible That will alleviate the burnout and it'll increase your chances of success. Also, with the apps, and this is what I tell all my clients, go into it with the mentality of it being like a party online. You know, like in a real life party, no one has their age or their demographics listed on their forehead, nor their resume on their belly, right? Like you go into a party and you just say, hey, how are you? And you meet a bunch of people. That's what I like for you to do for online. Give people chances, just get to know who they are, just talk to them. And when you do that, you're going to also open a lot more possibilities and opportunities. Okay. And the other, oh, I think I have more than one or no, I have more than five for you. I was just looking at my list here. Okay. The next one is limit complaining and insert playfulness. I mean, it's impossible to practice mindful dating. If you find yourself complaining on the date or you're oozing negativity and you might listen to this and say, well, I'm not negative on dates, but let me tell you, it leaks. You may not even be aware that it's oozing from your body language or even with what you say. You might say like one thing that might be negative and everything else is positive. But guess what? Your date And this is psychology, not just me saying this. Your date is going to remember the one negative line over all the thousand positive things that you said. So you've got to really be mindful of that. People often complain when they're unhappy. And complaining on a date is a sign that you're not quite ready to either be on that date that day or just overall. It's just, you know, again, it's not attractive. (laughs) Mindful dating is also about being aware of your readiness to be dating in the first place. So if you're just coming out of a breakup or you have a toxic ex and it's still kind of enveloping you, it it shows. People can feel that from you. So you have to resolve your emotional baggage before you can even look at this stuff. 
And instead, you want to bring positivity, fun, playfulness to the date as if you were a kid in a candy store ready to try all the new candies, especially if you've only tasted one candy like a Hershey bar, because here's the thing. There's so many candies out there. You don't know which one you might like better, but you have to go into that with that kind of fun curiosity. Okay, the next tip is notice how you feel throughout the date. Now, this is a little bit different than the first tip because the thing is I notice a lot of you are not even aware of how you're feeling. I asked somebody else, I'm like, oh, well, how, this is one of my clients. And I said, how did you feel on that date? And she proceeded to talk to me about what they did on the date. Well, we went to dinner and then this happened and he did this and I did this. And it was like, she was just kind of a reporter spewing facts about the date. I said, but that's not what I asked. I asked, how did you feel? And she really had to stop and think about it. And she's like, oh, well, I, I, I don't, think I really thought about that, or I'm not sure I even know. But it's very crucial to think about how that person made you feel um, and pay attention to that. You may notice different sensations rise throughout your first few dates. You may feel a sensation in your stomach as you're feeling nervous. You know, notice the sensation. Still, remember that it's not a sign or a bad omen. You may feel a lot of different emotions, you know, like excitement, happiness, empathy, frustration, disappointment, anger. And then it's up to you to kind of figure out what is causing those emotions or triggering that rather than choosing to react or just focusing on the actions of the date. It's really important because again, this is collecting data on that. Um, I remember there's a guy that I was working with and he was just so used to taking care of women that he would go on dates and anytime a woman needed to be rescued or seemingly needed his help, he just jumped into that fix it mode and helper mode. And it made him feel confident and proud to do so. But in the end, every time he would like in, be in a relationship with that woman, he started being resentful because it was always about the woman and it was never about his needs. But that was on him to kind of pay attention to those feelings in the beginning of when he gets into caretaker mode to really stop and say, well, what is it about being in a caretaking mode that's making you feel proud and excited? And so there's a lot of nuances to this. And if you're not used to feeling, you're not used to um, really like leaning into what is causing some of these emotions, this is a perfect time to start like paying attention to that. All right. And finally, talk with everyone as if you are just wanting to connect with them and have a kind of sense of curiosity. And what I mean by that, instead of trying to discriminate, if you are attracted to your date or the people that you meet, be open and flirt and talk with everyone you meet. Go in with the attitude that everyone has a purpose. Everyone. And that you can learn something from everyone you meet. It could be the valet. It could be a waitress. It could be an old man, an old woman, like anybody. And ask yourself two questions before you're meeting someone. What am I curious about and what can I learn? Instead of, is this my boyfriend? Is this my girlfriend? Can I see them in my house in 10 years? I mean, this is what will keep you more mindful, connected, And when you're in that state of curiosity, you'll be able to really listen and be present with people. And out of that, you might be surprised at what unexpected connections you might make. This happens all the time when I'm out and about meeting, you know, people, when I do my coaching sessions, when I do my dating retreats, when I direct people to just be more open. And it always surprises people when they say, gosh, Kimmy, I... I can't believe it. I I walked into a restaurant and I started talking to the bartender and that bartender happened to know a girl for me or you know whatever that is. But if you're not open to that and you're compartmentalizing your dating life by saying, "Okay, now I'm dating and now I'm swiping." That's a that is a wrong mindset. The right mindset is everywhere and anywhere are chances to meet people and that you should be in that dating mindset all the time. 
All right. I want to read you a email and a problem that I had from somebody who wanted my help. And this is from Tony. And it's, it's a, a woman, Tony. She said, ultimately, I would like to find my life partner. But for now, my focus is simply on dating men I find interesting and having fun. I think the biggest obstacle is just finding men I'm interested in dating and honestly managing the fear that it could be too late. It has taken many years to open up and allow myself to be vulnerable. I've done the therapy. I've done the inner work, still doing it and always open to learn, but reading many books, I've listened to many podcasts, and now I need some kind of action plan. I'm just not sure what that looks like. And I feel like I'm just going through the motions. Help, Tony. Well, first of all, Tony, what I appreciate about you is your honesty of where you're at and the realization that you have done a ton of work, yet you're still not finding the men interesting or having fun. And that is not fun. (laughs) But is it possible that you are not finding men fun or interesting because you are not fun or interesting, especially since you may be a bit guarded and reticent as you are slowly learning to open up and allow men to feel you with that vulnerability. So here's the thing. The first tip I have for you is to stop reading the darn books and podcasts. Well, you can keep listening to mine, of course, (laughs) but instead I want you to put yourself into action with doing things differently. Go online and start chatting with men you are not necessarily attracted to. Talk with men in the grocery store and share a story about something interesting about you. Take an improv class. Lean into being more spontaneous, playful, and fun. It's clear that you need to start being more interesting and fun so that you attract the alike. You have to have that mindset that you are not meeting men to see if they are going to be your life partner, but rather an interesting person to talk to and get curious with. Again, it's like being a kid on the playground. Y'all don't see kids hopping into a playground and vetting every person on the playground to see whether or not they're a good play date or play mate, right? Like, oh, I'm not going to ask that kid over there to go on the seesaw. He looks really busy or he looks me. No, kids who are four or five years old, they, they don't discriminate right? Like they just go in and say, hi, what are you doing? Want to play? What if we all did that in our everyday lives as we're meeting people out and about? And when you are having more fun with a mindful dating approach, you will attract someone with those qualities you are looking for. When you practice this mindful dating, you are going to increase self-awareness. You're going to be more present and create emotional connections with everyone you meet. Well, I hope that was helpful. I hope that was a little kick in the butt for all of you to wake up, get out of your trance, stop being a zombie and get into life and be more intentional and mindful when you are dating. And thanks for joining me today. Of course, this has been the Charisma Quotient and I am your host, Kimmy Seltzer. And remember, you can build confidence, make connections and find love from the outside in. And if you want to know more, make sure you go to my site, KimmySeltzer.com. And if you are numbing out, and not being intentional or mindful when dating, hop on a private call with me so that I can wake you up and put you into a dating action plan. And you can take action right now. Just take, go to the show notes, click the link you see there and book it. And remember, working on you is working on your dating life. That's all for now.